ready to cut the foam back now and I use my uh, filling blade this is an older one um, starting on the wall but you don't want to go too deep and then along the top of the skirting board to the wall beyond the plaster and you, you want to have enough room for a little bit of filler moving on to this one here on the wall Just put the front of it off and then taking an old screwdriver you can just push the foam in. And that gives you enough room to put some filler in there. So I'll give you a closer look at this. So along the wall first. and then along the skirting board remembering to give yourself enough room for some filler That's all the uh, cutting back of the foam finished and as you can see you want it so you have enough room to put the filler in so you've just got to cut it back a little bit on to the next stage ready now to do the filling the uh, first fill. Now sometimes for a first fill I'll use polyfiller. It all depends on how deep the hole is. There's a couple of deep holes on this wall. So I'm actually going to use this. This is undercoat plaster. It's quite cheap and it dries really quick. else on your filling board Now with this stuff, you don't want to mix it too thin. The idea is to have it a little bit coarse and not over mix it to a nice fine paste. That's ok. 
Okay. And then I've got my hawk. filling blade and fill some of these big holes. I'll show you this one here. Make sure you push it right in. I do like this stuff. Um, like I say, it dries really quick and it's good for filling any deep holes. Um, and you can wipe off with a cloth. It's really good. I'll show you wiping off that when it's dry. say you'll be surprised how easily this uh, wipes off and cleans off and you can carve it as well when it's dry Down the side of the casing there, I've been bringing it down with a bit of the undercoat plaster. It's not exactly a gap, but the plaster sits back a little bit, so I've got to raise it forward. So, little bits of um, undercoat plaster on your finger, and you can just run that down, just to build it out a little bit. A bit more. It's going off this now, so it's drying a bit. See, bud. A little bit more. Right, so I can leave that because I've filled it at the bottom. The other good stuff about this. Um, is it dries that quick anything that falls on the floor because there is a bit fell off because it goes dry at points and then starts falling off but it's really easy to clean up just can pick it up in lumps it doesn't really stick to anything so I'll leave that to dry for about 20 minutes and then with a damp cloth and my scraper I'll go over it all again and wipe all the mess up. I'll show you that. You want to clean all your gear off for the next stage. Do this before it dries, as soon as you've finished doing your undercoats plaster. Boards cleaned off the hawk with a damp cloth. Just 
and give them a wipe over. So I'm going to use the same bucket and water to wipe off the muck on the skirting board as soon as I'm ready. So it's not even been 15 minutes and it's dry enough to drop back and start the next process. So with your blade you can just give it a scrape over straight down off the plaster. skirting rod if there's anything on there and then give it a quick dust off and with your damp cloth you can wipe over everything Now you're better doing this before it's fully dry, otherwise it's a lot harder. Saves a lot of sandy. Well messy as well that is. Check over So basically go over the whole wall wiping and scraping the patches you've filled. I'll just show you this bit up the side of the casing. You see I've been wiping it down there. You can see where I've got to. So just wipe over the wee cloth. Comes off quite easily. It leaves enough filler in, in that you actually smooth over, ready for your second fill. I'd actually went round the whole edge of that. But again, I'll wipe over with a little bit of cloth. Well, it seems a bit of a scrape there. Wait for that to dry and then uh, well you don't have to wait for it to fully dry just leave it for about 40 minutes and then you can carry on okay so it's all cleaned off all round now um, so again make sure you clean all your tools off and I'll just show you this bucket of water Clean your cloth out. It's got a lot of heavy sediment in this undercoat plaster. Um, so
Now just leave that bucket to one side and allow it to settle. It literally will drop um, just in the day so by the time we come to clean up all the sediment would have dropped to the bottom and I'll show you what to do with it. We're ready to start the second fill now. Um, this is what I'm going to use. Now there's other, there's other fillers you can use. I prefer this one. Um, so pour some out onto your board. for what I want. Clean water. You never, you never want your filler too thin on the first fill with this stuff. So taking your damp cloth, you just need to give you the blade a wipe, I've got that underneath. You can start by filling the wall, the flat of the wall. Make sure you check over the flat of the wall and find anything what needs a fill. done around the centre and you've checked everything over and you've gone over any other parts and you've put the end of cold plaster in you can move up to the picture rail and work along the picture rail doing the top half of the wall so when you're filling the wall and you've been going over you've been going over it and filling some holes Sometimes the polyfiller you're using, it starts getting a little bit stiff and not as good as the fresh stuff. So what I do is I'll wipe it on the side and get a bit of fresh stuff and then carry on. Too bad. I'll 
just show you down the side of the case. Again, a little bit on the finger. And you can just wipe that down. And your finger just allows enough. Just wipe them fat edges off there. And the woodwork as well. Perfect. So again, some of this is the first fill on the uh, picture rail and on certain parts of the wall. So you can see the there's not much filling, there's a bit underneath the wood and then there's a little bit of plaster missing there. So I'm going to do the, the wall first. And I'm going to work my way along. Uh, and because I'm not taking the other paper off the other wall, I'm also going to fill down the edge of the paper to neaten it up. But to do that, you can put a little bit on your finger and then just wipe it down. Making sure you wipe any off the wall flat. If you leave too much on it's hard work. If you take it off it'll wipe off with the damp cloth. I'll just smooth all the edges over. Work your way down. And you can also use your finger under the picture rail because it's not much filling at all under there. But you can just get a bit on your finger and just work it under the edge. And then smooth it off. Difference. Okay, now. So I'll show you a bit on the skirting board. When it comes to the skirting, in certain areas you might find that you don't have to put that much filler in. But what I usually do is work on the wall surface first. And then I'll allow that to dry off a little bit and then I'll come back and do the top of the skirting. So we'll leave that bit there for drying off. And then some areas you might find there's actually enough on there, so all you need to do is give it a wipe along with your finger. And it just fills it right up into a nice edge. Also, at this point, if there's any bits on your skirting where you think you've chipped a bit of wood out, you can put a bit of filler on. That's not too bad there. I'll just show you this bit again. So, between the wall and the other paper, you can run some filler down. Making sure to remove these fat edges. Again. I'll go over the crack again.
So again, at the bottom, I'm going to just leave it for another few minutes for it to harden off. And then I'm going to go and make some more and just run across the top. I'll show you that when we're ready. When the filler has hardened just enough, you can take damp cloth. I mean, let's just have a look how hard that is. You know, it is quite hard. And you can set your cloth and you can wipe over any thick edges that are left. It needs one more fill that does. It'll be fine. But again, you can wipe over, getting rid of any thick edges. And I'll show you finishing the skirting now. It's dry enough now that it's not going to come off. So put some on your finger. You can rub along the top of my skirting now. Getting rid of any thick edges as you go. Good thing with your finger, you can adjust it very easily to how thick you want it to come out. And again, if there's any lump uh, holes on the skirting, you can fill them. It's not too bad though. So basically now. Once I've finished off the skirting and I've allowed it to dry, I'm going to check it over and see if it needs any more filler. Um, so in the next video, you'll see the finished filler and then we'll start the process of what you need to do next before you line it with some lining paper. The last thing to do for the day is make sure your gear is all nice and clean and you've wiped everything off. Now, the water I was on about in this bucket before, I've let that settle. And what you do is you pour off that top bit. Now this has only been settling for a couple of hours but if you leave it overnight it settles so you can just scrape out what's left in the bottom. You can see there now it's more just sediment so what I'm going to do with that is just pour it in my rubbish bag and allow the waste paper to soak it up. The rest of that can go down the toilet or outside on the grass, uh, sorry, you know, uh, down the grid or on the soil. Final look at that for the day. We're nearly there with all the preparation now. You can see a lot of the filler has occurred in the centre. And that's not an accident really. That's, I've concentrated more at head height um, rather than round at the top. I mean, they're all little bits what are filled, but it just makes that centre bit a lot smoother. So when anybody walks in, you know, you're always looking at head height and you're not looking up. Um, so yeah, but have a good check over it anyway. to